Okay, now, another way we can experience God is to uh, hear His voice by waiting on the Lord, that my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So, now, I talked about that earlier already, that how God's voice will come to us and guide us, so we pay attention to how God guides us all our lifetime, how we receive messages from God about our life, about repentance, about obedience, about uh, messages we want to teach, teach on, uh, how we help someone, or motivation to do something for God, to serve God. All of this, uh, if it's in accordance with God's Word, then it's from God. Now sometimes some people say, I don't know whether it's from God or from me. Then we just keep asking God. Now if that motivation becomes stronger and stronger, it keeps coming back. For instance, someone has a heart to serve God. And this heart continue to come back again and again. Then it, you know, it's become stronger and stronger. Then it suddenly comes from God. You know, every positive thought from us, according to uh, Philippians 2.13, that is God who works in us to will and to do God's will, uh, to do what is pleasing to God. So that is um, whatever is pleasing to God, whatever is accordance to God's will, uh, then it's God moving us to do it. Actually, we have got used to obe obeying God. We have got used to obeying the guidance of God. That already, uh, that's natural for a Christian. Uh, but sometimes we, you know, all this natural guidance, this natural tendency is already from God because God is moving from us. So we want to uh, we have this motivation to talk gently to people, to be kind to people, to help people, to do evangelism, to build up spiritual life of people. All of these are already uh, are the work of God, the voice of God guiding us. Uh, but sometimes we hear clear voice of doing some specific things uh, to help a certain person to repent of some sins, to uh, to. Uh, 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 to preach a sermon in a certain way or to help people in a certain way okay now and then now here are other ways of spiritual gifts that we want to bring a revival to our church that we want to operate under the power of God to lay hand on people uh, Mark 16 8, 18 they will lay hand on the sick and they will recover so this is one spiritual gift that all Christians will have because in uh, Mark 16, 17, it, Mark 16, 17, it says that signs will follow those who believe. So every Christian, all those who believe, can drive out demons and also lay hands on the sick. So, and then they will recover. So we all have this authority uh, that, uh, that we can use. But some people have stronger gifts in this. But no matter... Uh, whether we have strong gifts or not so strong gifts, we can still use that. Now, how do we build up this ability to lay hands on people? First, we build up an intimate relationship with God, that we want to have a close relationship with God, that we want to enjoy God, we like God, we are pleased with God, and whenever we think of God, we are happy with Him. God, you are so wonderful, I like you, I am happy with you, I desire you, I thank you, I'm happy with you, I like you. So build up this intimate relationship with God. And I hope that you all like God. You all enjoy God. And number two, take care of any sins and negative things in our lives. Because sins will uh, take away the favor of God. And sins will take away the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we want to uh, take care of any kind of sins, any negative thoughts. I have this very strong motivation. As soon as I experienced the Holy Spirit, I said, Oh, God can come to me so powerfully. I really want to have a close relationship with God. I want to really want to, uh, uh, to pray to God more and to experience Him more and also to pray for other people. So I have this motivation. And the thought come, come to me that any sins, any sins I have will destroy this anointing, will take away the blessings of God. And then God is not pleased with me. So I, I learned to really pay attention to uh, any sins that appear, any sinful thoughts that appear in my mind. Immediately I'll take care of that. So that's something I have learned. 
I have built up this habit of taking care of my sins and I hope that you all will take care of any sinful thought, any sinful negative thoughts, any sinful, any lust, any anger, any frustration. Now some people say, well, these people are not doing well, so I am angry with them. Well, anger is not going to, uh, you know, the anger of human is not going to accomplish God's will. Our, our anger cannot accomplish God's will. When we're angry with people, it doesn't motivate people to change. So we don't want to use anger as a way to change people. We want to change people with love and patience and kindness and goodness. We want to be kind to them. When there are problems, do we have to be angry? We don't. We don't have to be angry. We just find out from them, okay? Tell me what happened. Uh, are, are you aware of what, ha what you have done and what do you think that will, how that will affect you and uh, affect your relationship with God? and affect your relationship with other people, what you have done, how it would affect you. And are you willing to change? Are you willing to live a, a life that is pleasing to God? So we guide people. We don't have to use anger. Now some people would carry that problem on the back and say, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. We don't have to carry the anger ourselves. We don't have to be responsible for people. Now we help people. We are kind to them, but we don't have to carry the responsibility. We don't have to say, oh, he is not obedient, therefore I'm very angry, or I carry the burden, I'm very unhappy, I'm burdened because he is, he is uh, not obeying God. We don't have to carry the burden. If we carry the burden, then we lose the joy. So when I help people, even when people disobey God, I don't take it personally. I will just guide them to change. Guide them to love God. Guide them to obey God. Guide them to follow God. Okay, and then three, when we don't detect any evil spirit, even when we pray for a long time to God, with the approval of a pastor, we can lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit. What that means is, you know, there are some people who have, who have evil spirit. Then they should not lay hand on people because then the evil spirit can pass from them to other people. Now, what is the biblical basis for that? In Luke chapter 6 and chapter 8, in Luke chapter 6, it talks about the people want to touch Jesus because there was power coming from Him and healed them. So there is, uh, when they touch Jesus, there's power coming out from Jesus. And then in chapter 8, there was a woman uh, with 12 years of bleeding and she touched Jesus. And then Jesus asked, who touched me? And Jesus said, I sense power coming out from my body, so someone must have touched me. So Jesus sensed that, the power moving out from the body, so the touching can pass the work of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit to another person. Just as when Carlos and Acondia lay hand on me, I felt the power coming upon me. I felt love coming into me. So th with the touching, uh, the, the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit can pass on to another person. Now this is uh, what the Bible says, and that's why Jesus said to us, lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. And then we can see examples in the Bible of people laying hand on people. And then they experienced uh, the work of God. So now we have to understand, evil spirit also comes from uh, angels and angels came from God God created all the angels and some of the angels fell and rebelled against God and then they became Satan and uh, evil spirits now they they were originally angels so they share the qualities of the Holy Spirit the angels came from uh, Father, Son and Holy Spirit and so they share the quality of the Holy Spirit. One quality of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can be passed on by touching. So evil spirit also can be passed on by touching. So that is why some occults, they would lay on people to experience the evil spirit. So when people have evil spirit, they should not lay hand on people. They should build up a strong relationship with God and take care of the problems in the life and the sins and drive out the demons uh, every day until they have 
uh, they don't sense the presence of the evil spirit anymore. Now first the pastor can pray for them, but they can continue to pray for themselves. Every day, enjoy God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the presence of God will come stronger. And then they take care of their sins. And then in Jesus' name, I cast out any demons in me. Cast out any demons. And then all the demons will eventually will leave. So if a person don't have evil spirit, and with the approval of the pastor, that means the pastor, you know, have seen, seen the life of this person. Now, if a person doesn't have evil spirit, but he has problem of yelling at people, he has problem of lust and anger with people, then he should not lay hands on people. He should take care of his life so that people will say, well, this person is a godly person. He's following God. He's loving God. Then people will trust him when, when he lay hands on people. So a person who lays hands on people should have a good relationship with God, take care of their sins, and also build up a good, uh, build up good personalities, build up good qualities like patience, kindness, goodness, uh, and gentleness, and wisdom, and not to be angry with people. So they should learn to do that before they lay hands on people. So the pastor should train people like this. If we have trained a group of people in the church that they love God and take care of their sins, and they have good personality from God, then they will grow more and more. Then they will grow more and more and they can be used by God and lay on people and help people to experience the Holy Spirit. Now the people I've trained in Hong Kong, they do evangelism and they lay on people and, they, and the other people experience the Holy Spirit. And we practice that every week in a church. Every week we lay hands on each other and we get used to laying hands on other people to experience the Holy Spirit. So they get used to that and then they went, uh, go out and lay hands on other people and other people experience the Holy Spirit also. So that's, uh, it's wonderful to use. It's very helpful. When people experience the Holy Spirit, it's easier for them to believe in Jesus. It's easier for them to, uh, to change their life, to obey God, to love God, to serve God. So I hope that we all would do that. We all will say, Lord, I want to love you more. I want to serve you more. I want to enjoy you more. I want to be uh, motivated by God more. Uh, and so we build up this strong relationship with God and build up this anointing, this strong anointing of God. And then, and then when we pray for people to experience God, they would, this would motivate us to serve God more and more. After I experience the Holy Spirit, I pray for many people and they experience the Holy Spirit. Many, many people experience the Holy Spirit. Uh, they experience healing. They experience, some of them cry for a long time. The sadness come out. Some people experience joy. Some people experience power. The whole life is transformed. And then they, uh, the, the whole life is changed. And then they uh, continue to, uh, to grow in the Lord. And some people enter into ministry. So I see that I saw that this is really a good gift. And then my ministry go higher and higher because God gave me wisdom to teach, to help people experience the Holy Spirit, to train them in ministry, and they go higher and higher. So I hope that we all learn this. We all learn this and to experience the Holy Spirit and pray for people and then we have confidence in God. But in the process, do not be proud of yourself because the power comes from God. So every time we pray for people and experience the Holy Spirit, we should, we should say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing the wonderful things in the life of these people. Thank you, Lord, for using me. I need you. I need you. It's, I want to glorify you. I want to glorify you. It's for all for your glory. So when we serve God like this, then our whole life will go higher and higher. And uh, when I bring people to Jesus, I always lay hands on them to experience the Holy Spirit. And then I ask them what they have experienced. And I tell them, God is so real. God is so good. So you have experienced the Holy Spirit. Do you want to continue to be blessed by God? If they want to be continue to be blessed by God, and then I tell them the gospel. Jesus has died for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. And when you repent of your sins, and you trust in Jesus as your Savior, you have eternal life. And also God will continue to bless your life. So you love God and obey God. He will continue to bless your life. He will continue to change your life. Your whole life will go higher and higher. So do you want to love God more? So whenever I bring people to Christ, immediately I help them to love God more. 
help them to experience God more and then they uh, help them to dedicate their life to God and then the whole life is changed. So I hope we all use this spiritual gift of laying hand on people to help people to experience the Holy Spirit is very, very helpful for ministry, for building up people. If you have built up a number of people in your church, then your church will grow stronger and stronger. And then laying hand on laying of hands uh, can help people to experience the Holy Spirit. Acts 8, 17. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now this is uh, uh, the Christian in Samaria that they experienced the Holy Spirit. Then they received the Holy Spirit. Now laying on of hands will help people first to experience God's peace, freedom, joy, and love. So they experience the presence of God. And it's very comforting. And it also assures them that God is loving them. God is blessing them. God is with them. Two, to experience revival of spiritual life. So when we lay on people, they would, some of the people would say, wow, God is so wonderful. God, uh, let me experience His joy. I want to love God more. I want to serve God more. I want to carry the power of God so I can lay hands on people too, that they would be blessed. So then people's life is changed. The spiritual life is changed. So I hope you revive the spiritual life of your people in your church by helping them to love God more, to obey God more, to serve God more, to be used by God more. Three, to experience physical and inner healing. That they can experience physical healing or the e healing of the, of the soul, of the spirit, of their sadness inside of the hurts. All the hurts inside them can be healed. And then they can have freedom again. They can have joy again. Four, to be free of evil spirit. That, uh, that the evil spirit will be driven out that we can drive off demons from people, to receive spiritual gifts, that we can have spiritual gifts when we uh, lay hands on people, they can receive spiritual gifts, <clears throat> to have supernatural experiences. Now some people would see angels, see Jesus, and, or go to heaven, or hear God's words uh, speaking to them, or, or uh, see visions. All these are supernatural experiences. When people have these supernatural experiences, we want to help them to grow more and more to spend more time loving God and then they can see more visions to hear God's voice more and go into uh, or go to heaven more when they go to heaven and see Jesus more often they will be guided by God to bring a revival to more people when people have this experience of seeing Jesus it's very helpful and hearing the voice of Jesus directly is very helpful now I have prayed for people and then they uh, I have prayed for two persons and they both of them uh, went to heaven and they uh, uh, now they did not go to heaven at that moment now there was one person I prayed for, uh, now actually I have different experiences one person I prayed for she went to heaven and she went to hell immediately in the meeting and another a daughter of the pastor went to heaven right away. So uh, those are the two experiences. And then there, there were two persons I prayed for. And then afterwards, they spent more time loving God. And then they went to heaven. And they, uh, Jesus spoke to them. And uh, also Jesus showed them the book of life, of their life. And then they saw their life, uh, earlier life, when they were hurt by people uh, in motion. That is like a video. And then he saw the handwriting of God on the, on the side saying, you know, I care about you, I want to heal you, I, I love you, I'm sorry you're f uh, experiencing uh, this uh, uh, hurts. So they have this experience that helped them to, to see that God cares about them and it comforts them and heals them. And one person who, you know, one of this person, uh, she went to heaven one time and Jesus showed her her book of record of her rewards. And after she saw that, she said to Jesus, I want to see the book of reward of Pastor Yip. And then Jesus told an angel to bring the book of reward of me. And uh, when she saw the book, 
she said the book was thick and it was covered with gold and it says on the top my beloved son and then my name and when I heard that I said I thank you Lord I don't deserve that it's not my goodness it's your goodness you change me you transform me you know I've committed so many sins you forgive me you transform me and you help me to follow you you motivate me to follow you and when I ob obey you and follow you and serve you you're so happy and then you record all the good things I've done for you and then you record all the uh, rewards you give to me and I thank you Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Lord there were more than one person who told me that that Jesus was pleased with me and I thank God for that I'm not proud of that I I thank God for that I what I mean is, uh, I, I want to say, explain this more, uh, more clearly. I'm not proud because of these experiences. I just thankful. I appreciate God. It's all f from God. It's a gift of God. Uh, it's not that I deserve it. It's it's God's gift, and uh, I thank God that He changed me so that I will obey Him, uh, and then when I obey Him, He's very happy. So these are sp supernatural experiences of people. And I know one woman uh, that now this person is experience has nothing to do with me and she had uh, waited for the Lord for a year now when she started to wait for the Lord she started to experience peace and healing inner healing and later one year later Jesus appeared to her and said come I'll take you to heaven and then she he's uh, Jesus took her to heaven and she started to go to heaven from time to time and now every time she prayed she goes to heaven and uh, she has wonderful experiences in heaven and also she received revelation how to bring revival to certain groups so I saw her in operation uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit that she uh, the night uh, before she lead the meeting very often Jesus will woke her will wake her up in the middle of the night and tell her to pray and then she'll wait on the Lord and the Lord will tell her what to do in the next day uh, how to pray for the people how to guide the people how to uh, preach to them how to teach them so God is using her to bring revival to more people so these are wonderful experiences if you have this experience or someone has this experience we want to really appreciate God for that and we want to to build up their experience by loving God more and take care of any kind of sins and have humility and say all this came from God is not my strength it's from God it's God's gift and we give all glory to God and serve God and glorify God and then that person can go higher and higher and and that person can receive direction from God how to bring a stronger revival in the church so I hope that you will really want to bring a stronger revival to the church to bring a stronger revival to more people so that's very very important okay and then to be raised up to serve God so there are some people you know there are a number of people I, I pray for them and they experience the change of God and then they are willing to serve God they're willing to dedicate their life to God and I thank God that that I have this opportunity to uh, to raise them up to serve God so I hope that you would you know spot people in a in your church when you pay, pray for them and they are really they really have good responses to God they really respond to God and they are willing to submit to God and then you say well this person has a potential and then you talk to that person counsel them and tell them you have experienced God and you're responding well to God and uh, uh, please follow God more and listen to God's voice and and obey God's guidance and then you can go higher and higher your life can go higher and higher and you can do more things for God so we can uh, uh, encourage a person to be raised up by God and to consider serving God and uh, so whatever way it is now different people has different gifts so we want to raise up people uh, in that in the gifts they have in the gifts that God has given them then we want to use them according to the spiritual gifts and then they, will can, they can go higher and higher in the spiritual life okay now when we pray for people <music>